Hi all, welcome to a quick Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Um, this is essentially an extension of another tutorial series uh, out on YouTube. Uh, it's uh, Matthew Collage's Let's Create series. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, I'm going to link it below. It's a really fantastic series where he recreates popular uh, game mechanics uh, using Unreal Engine 4's blueprints. Um, for this, I wanted to take one of those and a, a more closely replicate uh, what we find in game. So this is Hanzo's wall climbing abilities and I wanted to retool the um, scripting that he put in so that it more accurately uh, replicates the game feel of Overwatch. So let's dive right in. Obviously we've got our input action for jumping and wall climbing uh, and what we're going to do here is on pressed we're going to uh, enable ticking on the actor and jumping uh, on released, we want to disable the tick and stop the jump. We're also going to uh, clear and invalidate this uh, timer, which we'll get into in just a second. Uh, we also want to check to see if the character is falling, because if it's true that the character is falling, uh, then we do not want to be able to wall climb. Um, if uh, That's only if we're releasing spacebar. Um, if it is true that uh, if it's false and we are not falling, then we must be on the ground, in which case we can, in fact, wall climb again. Uh, so then, all important, let's get into the logic associated with tick. Now, I know that every engineer in the world is screaming that it's not performative to put anything on event tick, which is true. You can put this all on a timer. Uh, I just haven't done so, and that's now your homework to go and figure out how you would do so. Before we get too deep into tick, I want to look at one uh, piece of information that we're going to need into this, which is that we will need the uh, vertical axis uh, input value, um, which is, of course, our forward and backward for the character. Uh, we, I'm just having it being stored into this variable here. Now, why do we need that? Well, let's see almost immediately when we dive into uh, the event tick logic. So obviously, if we're ticking and having our spacebar pressed down, uh, we want to check if we can climb. Uh, if that is true, we then also want to check if our vertical axis value that we just got is greater than zero. Um, why is this? Again, if our, if our quest is to replicate the game feel of Overwatch, uh, you'll notice in game that Hanzo will not wall climb unless you are holding forward the uh, forward button. So in this case, that translates into a a uh, vertical axis value that's greater than uh, zero, uh, that must be positive. So if that is true, then we can continue on with our wall climb logic. Uh, we've got a line trace here. Uh, we want to check to see if we hit anything. If we do, we want to check if it has our climbable tag, and if so, launch the character. Following that, we actually want to see, is this our first time uh, doing this check? Uh, if it is not, uh, we don't want to do anything, but if it's true that it is, this is our first uh, time checking this, in other words, that we are uh, just now climbing and is climbing is still false, we want to set this timer. Uh, obviously, this, I've got it here as a function. You can do it as an event as well. I don't think it really impacts anything. Uh, and uh, feel free to play around with the time too to more accurately reflect um, the game feel. I have it set to 0 0.8 right now, which I think is pretty accurate, but I could be wrong. Um, and then we'll get into that function in just a second. Um, but once that timer is set, we, and we have now gone through this logic for the first time, we want to set is climbing to true and get the handle for the timer. So at the end of the timer, it's going to call this function, and it is pretty straightforward. Let's jump to it real quick. Uh, as you can see, all it does is say uh, is a set can climb to false and is climbing to false, because obviously Hanzo cannot wall climb forever. And once that timer is done, uh, we want to disable the wall climb. Let's jump back over to the event graph. And let's follow it back a little bit, because we also have some logic attached to if the line trace does not hit anything. And that will fire off this other branch down here where we check if we are climbing. Why are we doing this? So in game, you'll notice that you have free range of movement of your mouse or your look. But if you look too far away from the wall, uh, then the wall climbing ends. You'll 
drop. You can no longer wall climb until you've landed. Uh, and that translates here into this line trace not hitting anything. So we want to check for this condition. Are we climbing and no longer hitting anything? Okay, so then we do the same thing as that function. Uh, and then we also want to clear and invalidate that timer because we don't want the uh, uh, timer, that, that logic of the function uh, just firing off willy-nilly. Um, it's the same thing as, again, down here with the spacebar. Uh, if we have already landed and reset our ability to uh, climb and then release spacebar, then uh, we want to be able to clear that timer because otherwise um, it, would, that, it would almost look like that timer logic would be firing off at random. Um, essentially, it would just be the, the timer ending and firing that logic when we don't want it to. And that's really the bulk of it. Uh, let's look at two other things real quick. Um, obviously, if this is the case, we need to disable tick um, because otherwise it will be enabled by default on the actor, which is not what we want with this logic. Um, it's also not exactly performative. Uh, we also have this uh, on landed event, which is all important too for the wall climb because that's what really resets it. Um, so here we can see on if we've landed, uh, reset our ability to climb, can climb becomes true. Uh, obviously we are no longer climbing, so we can say that this is false. And uh, we can also disable tick here because that just saves us a little bit of performance. The nice thing about this logic here too is that um, it accounts for a really <laughs> obscure edge case in Overwatch, which I'm sure that Nova One has ever really encountered because it's not actually used, uh, and you have to almost be curious and test it to see if it exists, which is that Hanzo can in fact climb on multiple walls. If you have uh, two walls coming together for a corner, you can swap between them um, really quickly. Uh, it doesn't like do anything, but it, it does uh, you know kind of reveal how some of this is um, working underneath the hood. Um, so again, if in our uh, obsessive quest to replicate the game feel of Overwatch, uh, this does account for that. So let's jump really quickly into Unreal and just test this out. Um, obviously, if I'm, uh, I've also got the line trace set to debug so we can see it. Um, obviously, I'm not pressing forward when I'm jumping, so there are no uh, traces happening if tick is not enabled. But if I jump forward, hey, look at that. We've got uh, uh, some line traces going on. And as you can see, it works just fine on this wall here uh, from standing. It also works perfectly from jumping, too. We go higher, as expected. And of course, if we look away, uh, we fall into the void. <laughs> um, so that's all for today. Uh, hopefully, this helps and gives you an idea of how uh, one of your favorite games is working underneath the hood. Thank you.